to the King of Kings. Glory and honor to the Lord of Lords. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. If there are any worshipers in the house, just open your mouth and give God some praise. If you don't have to be begged or manipulated to worship, but when you think about it, what God has done for you, you just have to say hallelujah. You just have to say glory. You just have to lift up your head and say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. It is so good to be at the Luke on this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. I give God praise for what God has done. Great and wonderful things that God has done. I give God praise because every day hasn't been perfect, but we serve a perfecting God. God who is able to make, make, take nothing and create something. The one who is able to make a way out of no way. The one who is able to show up when it looks like all is lost. And so I am grateful to serve that God. I am excited to be at a church that loves people. Amen. Do you know some people claim to love God, but they don't love people? I don't know how they do that. I don't know how they do it. But I'm so glad that this is a community. And not only do you show love for each other and for visitors, but for our community members with your giveaway on yesterday, with your connections to South Africa. It's a blessing to be a blessing. Amen? Amen. Just if you're a member, turn and tell somebody, I love my church. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, and then I thank God so much for Reverend Green, your pastor, and my brother. Hallelujah. Give God praise for him. He shows up in joyful worship and truly cares for people, and that makes a difference. Amen. And then I am excited to greet my sister and your first lady, First Lady Bria. Hello. Blessings, blessings, blessings. She hosted me on yesterday, or yesterday, two days ago, at the, at the Sisters Uptown Bookstore, and we had a beautiful conversation on healing, and so many of your members came out, as well as community members, and so I'm grateful for any church that takes mental health seriously. Amen? So important, so important, and we give God praise for the ministerial staff and to the music ministry. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. And to our ushers, doorkeepers, media ministry, everybody, because everybody is somebody. And so just turn and tell somebody, you're sitting in the VIP section. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just thought you should know. I just thought you should know. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, we need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, we don't know what to do. And so God speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Our scripture is brief on this Advent Sunday, Isaiah 9 and 6. Isaiah 9 and 6. And the King James Version reads, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Yeah. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And we're going to focus our time on today on that one word, Counselor. That the Counselor, hallelujah, is coming. Our theme on today is, I need a Christmas. I need a Christmas. Hallelujah. And the subtitle is, it's the justice and joy for me. It's the justice and joy for me. Hallelujah. Currently in the news and on social media, we have seen several reports coming from the Middle East where people have said as a result of the mass casualties and deaths that Christmas is canceled. Have you seen that? 
They have said because there is so much death and so much pain and so much horror that we need to cancel Christmas. While I understand the sentiment and I grieve with those who are grieving and I am heartbroken about the losses, I would respectfully resist that conclusion. If Christmas was about presents, I would say cancel it. If it was about a tree, I would say cancel it. If it was about just eating your favorite pie, I would say cancel it. But because Christmas is about the liberation bringer and the joy bringer and the love bringer and the peace bringer, I say I need a Christmas. Oh, it would be a shame to think that we cannot have Christmas because times are bad. I would say you need to study your Bible. Jesus didn't come because everything was going well. Jesus was sent because it was a crisis. Jesus was sent because humanity was suffering. Jesus was sent because there was division and conflict. Does it sound familiar? Jesus was sent because there was discrimination and dehumanization. Jesus came because we needed to have abundant life. And I came on today for those of you who would say, not only do we look at the Middle East, not only do we look at the pain in Sudan, not only do we look at the pain in Congo, but I don't know if you listened to the news in New York on last night. I don't know if you paid attention to the news in the United States of America this morning, but there is trouble in this land. And so in the midst of the trouble, there is a need for a hope bringer. In the midst of the trouble, there is a need for a faith bringer. In the midst of the trouble, there is the need for someone who knows how to make the crooked places straight. There's a need for, hallelujah, one who knows how to make the last first and the first last. There's a need for the one who can say to the storm, peace, be still. There is a need for one who can say to the mountain, move and it shall move. And so I am here on today on special assignment for those of you who are in need of a counselor. Those of you who, when you look at this year, would have to confess it's been difficult. Those of you who would say there have been some times you were curled up in your bed with tears or waited until you were standing in the shower so no one could hear you cry. I am here for those who have lost their appetite or can't stop eating. I am here for those of you who have taken out your frustration on the wrong people. I am here for those of you who have started picking at your skin and picking at your hair. I am here for those of you who had difficulty getting up out of bed on today. And so I thank God that you're watching it stream, hallelujah, live from underneath the covers, but you're still here. I am here for those who had to fight through despair and grief in order to just sit here on today. I am here to tell you you're in the right place at the right time. Christmas is coming. The Savior is coming. The Liberator is coming. The Healer is coming. Oh, I am here for those who have stopped praying for some things because it just seemed like it hasn't happened and it's not going to happen. I am here for those who are afraid to hope again. I am here for those who just thinking about going to your job tomorrow makes your stomach hurt. I am here for those who just the thought of going back to your house or apartment gives you a migraine. I am here to tell you that Christmas is coming, that Jesus is coming, that the Savior is coming with you in mind. Oh, if you're in need of justice on today, I don't know about you, but some things have not been fair for me. Do you know that sometimes bad things can happen to good people? That it's not just always a consequence. Yes, if you mess up, there are consequences. But there were some of you who were minding your own business, trying to live a good life. And unfairness and injustice showed up for you. And I want you to know on today that God is not confused about who you are. 
God is not confused or God has not forgotten the plans God has for your life. Tell somebody a detour does not mean a denial. A detour does not mean a denial. Oh, unfairness will take you on some detours because of your gender, your race, your economic status. It will take you on some detours, but God said, I've got my eyes on you. You keep your eyes on the prize. Christmas is coming. Not only do some of us need some justice, but some of us are hungry for joy. They can't remember the last time you did a real smile. I'm not talking about smiling for the camera with your eyes dead. I'm not talking about that fake laugh that you do for public relations. <laughs> Two seconds away from mourning and grieving. God said, I know that you are so hungry for joy. And the problem is all year long, you thought your joy was going to come through something else or somebody else. You were counting on that promotion for your joy, I know. You were counting on this being the year of your engagement, I know. You were counting on this being the year you would finally give birth, I know. I know you were counting on this being the finally the year that they apologized to you, I know. But God said, do not put your joy in the hands of the robbers. Those who stole your joy cannot give it back to you. God said, I am coming with your joy in my wings. And so I say to you on today what my father said to me earlier this year when I was going through a storm. He said, Tama, they're not pulling you down. They're elevating you. They just don't know it. Ah, uh, I don't know who has tried to break your spirit this year, but you are in the right place for your elevation and promotion. And because of what you have gone through, you will not forget. You will not become arrogant. You will not become like those who try to destroy you. This is teaching you something and preparing you for something and equipping you for something. Christmas is coming. I want you to know that Jesus was born in the dark. Not only was it dark times, and not only did his mother Mary have to go through the darkness of rejection and ridicule, but he literally had to come out of the womb. So whatever dark place you find yourself in on today, I wonder if you can just whisper to yourself, Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming, even when you can't see it, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And for those who have trouble believing it, can you just look at a neighbor and tell them it's coming? It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And so because Jesus is the counselor, I want to tell you some things about Jesus from the standpoint of counseling. The reality is that the traditional path is that you seek out a therapist. And I want to thank God for those of you on today who knew to seek God. Whatever your life circumstance is that taught you that you needed something higher than yourself, something larger than yourself. It may have been that you grew up seeing your grandmother pray, or maybe you grew up in a prayerless house and knew something was missing. But whatever it was that led you to be a seeker, I'm so glad that you have been seeking after God. And the good news is the God you seek has been seeking you. The God you seek has been stalking you. The God you seek has been running after you. You see, in psychology, we have something called community psychology. And with that, we don't wait for people to come to our office we come to the community. And so I wonder if you can think on the times God showed up for you when you were not in a church house. Oh, God showed up when you were in some alleyways. God showed up when you were in some back rooms. God showed up when you were laid on your back. God showed up when you were wandering.
wandering from place to place. God showed up when you were in the line trying to get some food. God showed up when you were in the bathroom stall at your job. God showed up. I'm so grateful that even when I wasn't checking for God, God was checking for me. Oh, I'm so grateful that when I wasn't looking for God, God had God's eyes on me. The next thing we understand about counseling is the biggest predictor. Predictor just means how you can most likely guess, statistically guess that something's going to happen. The biggest predictor of successful therapy is rapport. That means the relationship. So I might do this intervention or that intervention, but basically if you feel like I'm for you, we're more likely to get a good outcome, amen? And so I came on today to tell you that God has different strategies and Jesus has different pathways, but the most important thing is the relationship. And that's why your great grandmother would say, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And so on today, God is saying, if you want Christmas to come, it can't just be public relations. God said, I need to hear from you on Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. God said, I need you to read that book, hallelujah, on a Thursday afternoon. God said, I need you to speak with me and I need you to listen because we do a lot of talking at God. I want you to know that prophets are not the only ones that can hear from God, that if you get still and silent, you can hear God too. Oh, it has been some mass confusion intentionally to tell Christians that we're not supposed to meditate. They try to say that's antichrist. Sitting still and silent is antichrist? Come on. Come on. That to love God we have to talk constantly? Our four parents would say, steal away. Yeah. Steal away home. I ain't got long to stay here. Our grandparents would say, sweet hour of prayer. And so God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. In order for there to be relationship, you have to be open to God. And in order for there to be relationship, you have to stop doing public relations in your prayers. If you think you have to use big words to pray, that's not a relationship. If you think you have to follow the script, our Father, and that's a beautiful prayer, and I love the Lord's Prayer, but sometimes you need to speak from your heart. Sometimes you just need to say, Lord, help me. I don't know what to do. God, where are you? God, I don't like this outcome. Do you know that your relationship with God is strong enough for you to say the things that you're unhappy about? And so, in order for you to get better, your relationship with God has to get real. In order for you to heal, you have to tell God, I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding, this hurts. I'm bleeding, I'm disappointed. I'm bleeding, I'm frustrated. I'm bleeding, I've lost too much. I'm bleeding. And God will say, oh, you need a Christmas. Help is on the way. Let me tell you that sometimes we get confused in our faith and we're, we think we're supposed to just say, I got it, I got it, I got it, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And God is sitting back like, oh, you your own savior. Oh, but when I crack through my own performance and say, God, I don't know what to do. God said, I was waiting on that. I actually know the next step. Do you want to hear it? Ah, uh, I hope you will build your relationship with God that will not be dependent on a building, although it is strengthened in the building. It's got to carry you when you get out of the building. Not only does God seek us 
and God wants relationship with us. But Jesus is also a masterful counselor because of his assessment skills. In order to heal, you need the right diagnosis. Do you know you can trick people a lot of the time? And people think they're addressing your need, but they don't even know you. Turn and tell somebody they don't know you. Oh, because some of us grew up knowing how to make pretend. Ah, uh, some of us grew up in households that would say, fix your face. <laughs> fix your face. And so when you're in the midst of the storm, you show up like this. <laughs> How are you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Just don't hug me too tight. I might start crying. I'm blessed, though. <laughs> Oh, but I'm so glad that we serve a God who knows how to search your heart. We serve a God that I can't lie to. We serve a God who lives, hallelujah, lives high and looks low. Ah, I, I, we serve a God who knows something about the valley, who knows something about the tomb, who knows something about the humanity. And so God can diagnose my problem. It doesn't matter how many years ago it was. It doesn't matter if you say to me, I'm over it. God understands the reason why you are sabotaging your current relationships goes back to when you were nine years old. God knows the reason why you don't stay at one church too long is what happened in your childhood church. God understands the reason why certain songs, hallelujah, in certain sense, make you mad God said I am coming with healing in my wings I am coming to give you back your joy I am coming to give you back your peace that you are more than your wounds that the trauma does not define you nor restrict you God said I know you better than you know yourself you can run but you can't hide 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 I won't give up on you I won't give up on you I I am your very breath. I am your very breath. I am your very. Oh, there's healing in the house. There is healing in this house. Christmas has come. There's healing in this house. Not only do we need the right assessment, but we need a divine intervention. God said Jesus is a wonderful counselor because Jesus will take you back to your original identity, your sacred identity. And some of us have been acting like things we are not, and it goes back to our woundedness. But I want in 2024 for people to meet you before they meet your wounds. Oh, I want in 2024 for your joy to outweigh your sorrow. I want in 2024 for your peace to be more than your anxiety. I want in 2024 for you to have a new reason to live and to wake up in the morning. It's a divine intervention. Now, I want to tell you on today that it is surprising to many that a part of healing is joy. And that's our theme in this Advent is joy. My area of specialty is trauma recovery. And I had another therapist in my suite say to me, Tama, I'm so surprised that your area is trauma. And I said, why is that? And she said, because I always hear a lot of laughter coming out of your office. While there's healing in your tears, there's also healing in your joy. There's also healing in your laughter. There's also healing in reclaiming your humor. And so how do I get my joy back? I know many of you have heard of the word triggers, right? Those are things that remind you of the trauma. Have you heard the word glimmers? Glimmers are little moments, things, people, sense, actions that remind you of your joy. Oh, I believe St. Luke can be a glimmer on today. 
that when you enter into this sanctuary, that something in you will begin to activate your joy. I believe that as the dancers were dancing on today, that it was a glimmer for somebody to have some joy on the inside. I believe as the singers were singing on today, that it was a glimmer for somebody. I believe somebody who left out of an empty apartment and came in and saw all these decorations that there was a glimmer in that. I believe that those who grew up not having enough, being able to come on yesterday and give out clothing and coats and socks, that that was a glimmer for you. Oh, where is your glimmer? It needs to be something small enough that you can encounter it. Your only glimmer cannot be expensive. I understand for some people a glimmer is a new car and a cruise. But until that comes, can you get a glimmer that you can activate on today? God says hallelujah is also called simple pleasures. Simple pleasures. Just look at somebody and say simple pleasures. Not only do we get our joy back with the glimmers, but we also reclaim our joy with gratitude. Oh, when I think about what God has brought me through, it restores my joy to know that even this storm is not the worst storm. That I've been through some storms that were bigger than the 2023 storm. And if I individually have not, my family has. And if my family has not, my community has. We have been through a way that with tears have been watered. Oh, when I think about what we've had to survive, and now we want to sit here and get amnesia. Wow. My Lord. We take it for granted that we can look up at the scripture on the screen. Do you know it was illegal for our four parents to read? My Lord. It's not a chore. This is an honor. I'm reading this for my great, great grandmother. In the light of day not hidden and not fearing anything. Oh, it's a joy. I wonder if you can think about when you were in your sick bed. I know especially some of our seniors didn't know if they were gonna make it through the pandemic. And so here you are on a Sunday morning with joy in your feet and joy in your heart. We reclaim our joy. We also reclaim our joy through community. Just turn and smile at somebody. And look, if they didn't smile at you, turn back and say, what you mad for? <laughs> it don't have to be perfect to smile. Just we're in here together. That's a blessing. That's all. That's all. I'm not erasing your pain. I'm just saying this second right here is a good second. We'll face whatever we got to face when we get out of here. But this moment right here counts. Oh, there's healing in community. And then there's also healing. Our pastor was prophetic earlier when he talked about us dancing. We reclaim our joy in our bodies. I'm trying to think of something everybody can do. Can we all just do a shoulder roll? Uh -huh. Just turn and look down on your row. Look at them. Yes, there's some joy in these bodies. Only trauma survivors know how tightly we often hold our bodies. If you're a trauma survivor, you often hold your breath, you hold your neck, you hold your back, you wake up stick, you stick, stiff, you lay down stiff. God said, if you want to get your joy back, move your body, <laughs> move your body, move your body. There's joy in your dance, there's joy in your movement, there's joy, hallelujah, as you reclaim your body. And finally, God says we reclaim our joy with something called radical hope. Radical hope is not just that I'm hoping things will be better for me. I'm hoping things will be better for everybody. And so the joy I have is not because of the current circumstance, but what God has given me a glimpse of, of what is to come. 
And so I can have joy about the future of Palestine and Israel. I can have joy about the future of the Congo and Sudan. I can have joy about the future of Ukraine. I can have joy about the future of Brooklyn and Bronx and Harlem, hallelujah, USA. I can have joy about the future of my family. I can have joy about the future of these public schools. I can have joy about the fact that there are people homeless right now that'll be in homes in 2024. Oh, it gives me joy. Not only is it the joy for me, but it's the justice for me. And so I need a Christmas because God is coming to make it right. And I'm not just talking about in heaven. That is the way some of our community members were sedated about injustice. To be told it will be better by and by. Oh, but we come from a liberation theology that says by and by can be right now that it can be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so what we want for fairness and justice and equity is not just when I get to heaven and I got a robe and you got a robe and I got wings and you got wings. No, we want I have health care and you have health care. I have child care and you have child care. I have safe housing and you have safe housing. Oh, Christmas is coming. As I prepare to take my seat, I want to take you back to Christmas, December 25th, 2012. I was in the hospital in Los Angeles, ready to give birth to my son, Io. And we had been so excited, my parents flew into town. It was the middle of the night, so his sister, who was seven years older, was in town, but she was asleep on a chair in the room. My parents, Bishop John and Reverend Cecilia, were in the room, and we were so excited. This was about to be the final grand and the first grandson. Oh, y'all know they were excited. We're excited. And then when I pushed and breathed and breathed and pushed, Io was born, and he wasn't breathing. And it took a moment for me to realize that he wasn't breathing. And they were working on him on the table and all I could hear in the room besides the silence and the machines was my mother whispering, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they were about to take him out of the room but I hadn't seen him yet and no one had told me he wasn't breathing. And I said, wait, where are you taking him? I didn't see him yet. And so they come past my bed and they're just holding him and he's not moving, not breathing. And they just let me see him and they take him out of the room. And then his father rushes after them out of the room. They're taking him into intensive care and they try to intimidate his father out of entering the room. They say, you don't want to be in here. And he said, I do. How many of you have had sick relatives and you know they get treated better if somebody's watching? And so his father pushed his way into the room. And the room is full of babies in machines and in incubators. And Ayo is in the middle and he is getting all the care because his father and his father is in the room. And there was a long time that we were waiting in that room and Ife, his sister, was sleeping and my father was silent and I was silent and my mother still the intercessor, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. And after a long time on that Christmas day, they came into the room and said, he's breathing. Oh, Christmas came. And I want you to know that Ayo's name is an African name and a Khan name that means joy. We already decided his name before we knew about the despair. So I want to say to you on today, in the midst of no breath, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the silence, joy is coming, joy to the world, ah, joy to the world, joy to the world, the savior is coming, the liberator is coming, the healer is coming, be not afraid, be
be anxious for nothing. God will take care of you. Merry Christmas.